So there's a blue LED underneath it there. And when we pump them, you can actually see that's the color that they're going to emit when you illuminate, when you make a sheet of this material and then you pump it with a blue light. So by comparison, we have our little handheld spectrometer here, which is a fun little toy. Um, we can look at, for example, what the backlight spectra looks like from a white LED. And a white LED backlight spectra actually looks a lot like a white OLED spectra. So what I can do is I can look at that spectra and I can see that it has a blue peak because basically a white LED is a blue LED with a yellow phosphor. And so the yellow phosphor gives me a very nice, long, wide, broad, continuous amount of color ranging from, you know, uh, turquoise all the way out through red. This turns out to be not so bad for things like general illumination because in general illumination, our eyes are actually looking for sunlight. We're looking for reflected light coming off of surfaces and we're evolved to look for sunlight. But if you have a three color primary system where you're just trying to make red, green, and blue and vary the amounts of red, green, and blue to make up all those in between colors, this is not so great because again, you have very little red power and your principal green power is in the wrong place. By comparison, if we take a uh, sheet of this uh, quantum dot film using the quantum dots, and we place that into a blue backlight system, which is the same blue LEDs as we have in a white system, but just with no phosphor, and we take a look at that white light that comes from there, we have a very nice red, green, blue peak spectrum, right? <coughs> which is very different and well matched to exactly what the characteristics are that you want to have in the display. There's test screens that show up here and you can see those and I encourage you to come up and have a look at them. <coughs> um, in those cases, you can really see the difference in the color bands, you can see the difference in the contrast bands and everything else that go along with uh, the difference in this technology. People love to talk about the, uh, the dynamic range of, of OLED. Another thing that's really important though is peak brightness. And so peak brightness, in the absence of peak brightness, there's just a tremendous amount of data that you're not able to display. With quantum dots and having the high efficiency that they have, we're able at the same power budget to help television manufacturers basically make a brighter set. And that translates into a number of things. So for example, at the high end here, you can see that you know, we basically blow out the, uh, the brightness spectra above, you know, 1,000 nits. And this is, you know, kind of down in the, I don't know, six, seven, eight hundred nits. So again, please come up and have a look at these guys. Um, when you uh, begin to look at the uh, dark levels, it's also interesting because this set actually does a very nice job with the dark levels down here. This set obviously does a great job as well, but you can't actually see the difference between, for example, 5 minutes and 2.5 minutes. 